Alright, uh, hey guys, I'm just gonna make a quick video showing off some scripts or uh, functions I made in PowerShell. And essentially just to allow you to uh, encrypt or encode uh, messages or even text files, text documents. Uh, one issue I'll say is that right now I'm using uh, PowerShell 7.1 Preview. Um, however, I noticed with the decryption, uh, for some reason it doesn't want to work. So normally I just use a normal PowerShell and it fixes all the issues. But um, yeah, so I'm going to just show off just a few of the, uh, few, a little bit of the functionality. So first, here's the file that here in a bit we'll try to encrypt. But um, yeah, so I have three functions. I'll show you where they, see, notepad, shit, if I can learn how to type, profile. And so disregard this first one, that's another, so just another function. But um, yeah, so first one, Bucky64 encrypt, unique name, very um, technical. Um, yeah, it's pretty much, I just took these three, three uh, functions. First one being encryption, second one being decryption. Last one being just a test, I guess, a brute force function to see if you could brute force keys. And I just threw them into my profile, so that way, whenever I open up PowerShell, I have them built in. So, um, yeah, so first I'm gonna start with fucky64 encrypt. Um, and first we'll just encrypt the message. So, message, test here, and we'll just leave it like that. And that's what the encoding, I guess, comes out as. Um, and then if you want it to be verbose, uh, or if you just want to see, I guess, how it actually works, just uh, put attack verbose, and it'll kind of take you through all the steps. So you got uh, your clear text. From clear text, it goes to base64. Uh, from base64, it replaces just some of the random characters with pluses, minuses, and, um, and uh, exclamation marks. From there, it, it pretty much cuts this string into two separate arrays of uh, even characters and odd characters and then puts all the even characters first and uh, odd characters last. From there, takes every single one of these characters and converts it to hexadecimal. And um, from there, we take the uh, base64 of this string as well. And lastly, kind of do the same. We repeat like some of the steps. That's just for the encoding. So essentially, I just was just bored one day and just started messing around um, with PowerShell, just trying to make just something egregious and annoying. So something as small as like test here comes out to this long ass string, but um, I just kept working on it, um, building onto it, and then uh, end up including an encryption feature. Um, and so let's fucky encrypt. Let's go message pizza time because we all love Spider Man. And uh, for the key, this, the key is an integer, so that I think it has a PowerShell has a maximum of like two billion and something for. Uh, for integers. So because of that, I generally just keep my keys to a maximum of nine digits. From that, we'll just do uh, 69420 because that's the only logical uh, key you can use. But uh, so the output is totally separate, totally different. It um, comes out to like a pseudo numerical output. And we can kind of do the same thing with this do attack verbose. And it's a little longer, as you see. But yeah, so you get your clear text, you got your key. And then so from the clear text goes to base64, base64. So essentially it repeats the first few steps. But then right after here is where uh, it changes. So it uh, conjoins the hexadecimal and then converts every single one of these characters into ASCII. And then from there, we take every eight of these characters, of these uh, just ASCII characters, and we throw them to a... Uh, and we convert it to integer. So it's, a, it's an array of integers, essentially. And then from there, we uh, take the key, and if I remember correctly, it's divided? Yeah, well, yeah, I believe you divide by the key. And this show is going to try to find something even more just egregious and annoying. But um, I got lazy. I knew if I changed how it worked here, I'd also have to change my decryption and encryption. But um, yeah, so essentially, it creates a... Uh, yeah, so it just divides these... Uh, these uh, ASCII characters, and then kind of does the same thing we did up here. We created two arrays of even and odd, um, I guess, outputs, and then it just chooses a random letter, and it conjoins them all into one string. So that's essentially how the encryption works. But um, so let's first. I guess now I'll use the. I included some get help 
features. So let's look at the uh, get help. This uh, would probably, probably pause it here, read this, because if anything, I'm probably confusing people. I'm not great at explaining things without just rambling. Um, but yeah, so I got included some uh, get help features for both. Uh, we'll try get help. Jesus Christ. Bucky, 64 decrypt. And then keep. And so, a little bit of both. I recommend just pausing it and uh, reading through all these. But, um, yeah, so first let's. There's a few, a handful of things you can do with this. Um, uh, well, first, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and try to encrypt the uh, encrypt me file. So, our test file here is just a copy pasta with uh, some new lines, some tabs, and then just some extra just characters. Um, yeah, so here, if we do plug 64 encrypt, we'll do attack file instead. Well, first, we can do the absolute directory, or we can just change directories to x slash uh, tester. From there, we'll do a plucky 64 encrypt file encrypt me.txt. The uh, the dot and the, the backward slash, those aren't required, but um, yeah, it doesn't hurt. Uh, key, same thing, we'll do a key of uh, yeah, 69, 420. It'll take a little longer, but yeah, so now the, it'll tell you file successfully encrypted. You can also encode it so without using a key. Um, but now if we open it, we have all this, and good luck reading that. But um, yeah, so now we'll try to use my uh, Bucky64 decrypt. Well, first, I, let me... People, I probably annoyed a lot of people with that. But, um, yeah, that's whatever. But, so let's try to decrypt that, except we'll try to use a, uh, so encoded file is, uh, it's, what the hell just happened? Decrypt, ink file, that's encrypt me, and then we'll use the key as something that's not the actual key. It'll try, but it won't work. And luck, so initially when I, when I first started making this, the issue was um, I didn't include this, uh, I guess, error correction. So essentially, if you put in the wrong key, it would go through and try to, to uh, decrypt it. And then the output, it would overwrite the file with the output, which if you put in the wrong key, it would turn out to just be like null. So essentially, you would lose your file and just this would just be replaced with null space. But luckily, my uh, dumbass added some error correction, so now it actually just tells you incorrect key, but, um, and then also if you don't do anything, it'll tell you no key enter, but, but yeah, so here, go to key, 69420, enter, give it a minute or two, file successfully decrypted, all right, let's look at this bad boy, all right, what do you know, so we still have the, we still have the tabs, we still have the new lines, it's still in Windows CRLF format, and, uh, yeah, it turned out pretty well. But the, uh, other function I, uh, included was a key generator. So first, let's, uh, oh, also, I guess before I go there, one thing I'm gonna try or show is, uh, a test bar. I'm gonna encrypt a message, and then, uh, in the, uh, in this decrypt function, I included a, a parameter that allows you to directly invoke the, um, invoke the message if it's decoded or decrypted uh, properly. So let's go equals fucky64 encrypt message. We're gonna do um, mcdir malware dir output uh, yeah, output to null. I should probably do a single asterisk for that. Not or single quote. From there, and then we're gonna change directory to malware dir and the key is going to be a super secure key. One, two, three. There we go. And so now let's uh, echo test bar to verify. All right, something ugly. Let's clear that. Now let's go fucky 64 decrypt. Uh, let's see, what, what is it? The ink message. The test var. Uh, if I don't have dementia, and that's what it was, I don't remember. Uh, and the key... One, two, three, tack, invoke. And it didn't work. Awesome. Interesting. So, malware dir. So, we see that it created malware dir, but for some reason, 
Did I make a typo? Hmm. I'm too lazy to remake this video, but normally it works. I guess I got some change right here to malware dir. Hmm. I guess I got a little more testing to do, but normally it works. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll just show off the last, the, uh, the last function I made, which is just a key generator. So let's see, key generator, the encrypted message is test bar. And then there's a different, there's a handful of like different functionalities. Um, so first we'll just leave it like this. Actually, I just realized if it goes like this, that will take a long time. So essentially what it does is it goes through um, all like nine digits. It calculates every single potential key um, up to nine digits by default. However, you can specify the uh, max digits. Uh, obviously the key is three, so we'll just do three. Give it a second and it'll tell you all the successful potential keys. And how it does that is it essentially takes every single one of the um, I guess let me echo test var. So essentially it takes every single one of these up until this delimiter, the uh, the letter, and essentially it takes every single one of these and divides it by, divides or multiplies, I can't, I can't remember how I wrote it, um, but it uh, essentially m multiplies these and if it comes out to an even number or a proper integer, not an even number, yeah, proper integer, then then it's considered a potential key. However, for it, it to work, every single one of these, let's see, yeah, every single one of these has to come out to a to an integer. Otherwise, it's not a potential key. But I also included some extra functionality that allows you to, without actually having to go through the code and figure out how it works, if you want to do verbose, ooh, it'll tell you every single time it, um, every single time it finds a potential key and it tests the key. It'll go through every single one of the tests and it'll tell you the result, essentially. It tells you the status, whether it passed all of them, whether it failed all of them, or if it barely passed. And uh, barely passing is, um, for a key to pass, essentially it just needs to pass one, or pass two thirds of uh, the tests. And, um, and then the last one we got is very verbose. And this is very noisy. But essentially, it gives you the best, I guess, rundown of how it actually works. Um, with this, I don't feel like scrolling all the way up. But essentially, it, it shows you every single test the key undergoes. Actually, I lied. I will go, go up just so I can show you the first part. So essentially, how it works is it starts at one, and uh, or just one-digit keys. And essentially, if if uh, one of the uh, if one of these indexes has zero potential keys then it automatically skips to the next iteration because from there you can you can determine that all right if this key has no or if this index has no potential keys then obviously the correct key is not going to be in this digit range so then it skips to the next digit range and just kind of repeats until it finds potential keys all right oh there's seven potential keys that for the first index and then essentially goes through and tests every single one of them and i found there were some issues um like there are like some keys that actually come out to like nine 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 or or nine eight um or zero zero one or zero 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 there's just a lot of nines a lot of zeros but um essentially if they're close enough i just rounded it um but yeah so it goes through every single potential key and tells you if it passed it's a very verbose it's very loud however it's good for um it's good for everything how it works and uh, all these you can tell these failed um but yeah so it's just a interesting tool I wrote um currently i don't have it posted anywhere but i figured it was neat figured some people might like it and i'll probably throw it on like a google drive or some shit and then put it in the description if anyone's actually interested um i doubt anyone actually made it this far in the video because i've been rambling how long is this video now probably like 45 minutes 72 minutes something like that something crazy um but yeah so essentially those are just the three scripts i was bored and wrote thought it was neat and turns out i was like ah shit that's cool you can encrypt files um yeah, it's neat. So, but yeah, so in the chance that you don't know how many digits it is, I also included um, max, what was it, max passes. So essentially here, also probably want to remove very verbose. Essentially what it does is, it's um, so like I said, if you don't include any options, it just goes through all nine, um, all nine digits, and that will take hours, like literal hours. Um, 
Um, but, uh, yeah, so now if you have max passes, so it'll stop after the first successful key, um, all the way up to, you know, however many you want. Um, so if you don't know how many digits the key is, you can just do max passes to speed it up, and just max passes one, if that key doesn't work, go to max passes two, you know, repeat over and over again. But, but yeah, interesting, interesting stuff, nerdy shit. Um, so, I guess over the next four years, the, uh, all 23 views I'm going to get on this video. I hope you guys liked it. Um, like, subscribe, follow me, um, subscribe to my Patreon, my OnlyFans. Um, and, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Farewell.